So now let's sit quietly <clears throat> and let's summarize and assimilate the class so that we can bring it into our lives. It is said that whatever you adore, you grow in the likeness of you grow into the likeness of the one whom you adore. So if we adore the mother, somewhere we grow into her likeness. One particular aspect of the mother which we explored today was her unconditionally forgiving nature. Rather, a nature which never got wounded by anything, so a nature which had transcended the need to forgive. You forgive only when you are hurt and then you overcome it. But if you are not hurt, there is no question of forgiveness. So it's good to remind ourselves of that little story we explored of how a sadhak who was upset with the mother set up a little boy to shout Nakli mother, Nakli ma ki jai, victory to the false mother. And everyone got so riled, they entreated the mother to throw the, ashram, the boy out of the ashram. But the mother said, why should I throw him out? People said, because we get upset. And the mother said, those who get upset are worse than him. And she looked after this very person who said things against her to the end. So we see in her a nature which did not get hurt by this. How do we grow into this nature which doesn't hurt in the first place? So we explored a beautiful mantra from the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. I am Atma Sarvanubhu. This Atma is the real experiencer of all experiences. So if we look at the way we function, there's an incessant stream of thought going on in our headspace. Because there's thought, we feel there's an I who's thinking. And that I changes thought to thought. But Louis Fisher reminds us, this hurting, inconstant self is not really you. That I is a phantom. It has no ontological reality. A reality in being, just the way a movie that I watch has no reality in being. That I also has no ontological reality. But behind this phantom eye in the thought stream, there is a field which observes the thought stream. That observing field is the Atma. And that Atma is the one who experiences all experiences. The real experiencer, since the phantom eye in thought cannot experience a phantom cannot experience and this Atma is what the Gita tells me no fire can burn it no sword can cleave it no water can wet it so this Atma which receives all experiences remains unaffected by any experience so if you just repeat the word Sarvanupu, the real experiencer, and constantly remind yourself in moments of high that the real experiencer isn't being affected by this high. In moments of low Sarvanupu, the real experiencer isn't being pulled down by this low. Then we come closer to growing into mother's nature which transcends the need to forgive. So let's end by chanting this mantra from the Brihadaryanyaka Upanishad three times. 
Ma Brahma, Sarevam.